Today I'm going to show you how to cheaply and easily 3D scan with an old Xbox Kinect sensor. Before Xbox One, there was Xbox 360, and with it came the release of the Kinect. As a piece of hardware, it's pretty simple. It has a couple of infrared cameras, as well as a normal RGB camera, and together it mixes them to work out depth information, and that's how it tracks you in the games. You can get these pretty cheaply these days, only about $30 Australian secondhand on eBay. The good news is they've been around for long enough that people have hacked the hardware, and we can use them for other purposes, like 3D scanning. Now to get this working, we need a piece of software called Skinect. S-K-A-N-E-C-T. I have the pro version, which is 130 US dollars, but there's also a free version that does everything the pro version does, except it's limited to an export of 5,000 polygons. If you head over to their website, it has installation guides, as well as a list of all the different compatible sensors that you can use, but this one is by far the cheapest. So along with the software, as well as the sensor, there's one other thing I'm gonna need for this tutorial, and that's a model. This is my very lovely and very patient wife, Claire. Hi. Are you ready to be 3D scanned? Yes, I think so. Let's get to it. All right, so I've got Claire set up on a stool and it's important that she's able to swivel. So do a little pirouette for me, a slow pirouette. Diabolical. It's very important for your subject to be able to rotate as smoothly as possible. The faster your computer, the better the graphics card, the better it'll be able to track them. But going slowly guarantees that it won't lose its position and you'll get a really accurate scan. Let's start. So we're going to come to new in Sconnect and we're gonna keep it on body. You can see there's options here for objects, room, half room, things like that. But the most popular one will set up a bounding box of one by one by one meters. Our aspect ratio can be normal. Our path is fine. The config file is fine. Let's go to start and instantly we're seeing what the sensor is seeing. So in the middle of the screen, we have our composited view. And then on the top left, we have the views of the various sensors. So if I come too close, you can see it turns black. And conversely, if you come too far away, which I don't actually have room for here, you lose color as well. So what we're looking for is red at the minimum, and that will give us an accurate image. So what I want to do to start is to have the sensor on my subject and then come up and hit the start button and then I will instruct her to keep rotating and you'll see me lifting it up and down and all around. That's to make sure I get a full scan. You'll find often problems behind ears, under noses, under chins, things like that where the data is just not very obvious and the surface mapping struggles a little bit. You'll also find dark hair like this and especially mine is particularly hard to scan dark clothes as well. But we'll see what happens. Let's begin. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, so now the screen is replaced by a real-time map of what it's seeing. And we can move back and forth to start taking in data. I don't want to get too close. I don't want to be too jerky. If I do, I will ruin the scan. Okay, Claire, can you start to rotate to your left towards me very slowly? Okay, hold that position. And I'll get underneath the hair here. It's almost impossible to do this without having some gaps. Too close, it's turned red. Okay, another 45 degree turn, please. Okay, stop. You can see I'm getting a frame count on the screen. Getting 16.31 frames, which is not too bad. Okay, rotate 45. Let's stop. Try to fill in some of the blanks on the hair here, so I need to come from above. Okay, another rotation, please. Okay, stop. So I've got a few gaps in the hair here. You can see the red and the black splotches is where there's nothing at all. Okay, one more rotation. Okay, I think that should pretty much do it. I'm gonna carefully, without moving the sensor and losing my sync, come up and hit the stop button and let it process. 
All right, we can see our scan is finished here. Already it looks pretty damn cool. So you can see that one by one bounding box I actually got pretty close to that there, which means anything that protruded beyond that would have been cropped. There's several things we can see on the screen here. The first is this faint white trace. That's the path that the Kinect sensor took around the objects. And then we have the actual scan in the middle here. Not unusual for it to look pretty crazy at this stage, so person shouldn't take it to heart if they don't look perhaps like they think they should. And then we come to process and we start to get into some of our other tools. There is another mode to process called reconstruct where it steps through everything again and tries to reprocess it. I find the results aren't necessarily that great despite it taking quite a while. So I like to come to this process and one of my favorite things to do is to come to colorize. I'm going to leave all of the default settings and hit run. Okay, that looks more like it. Oh, something a little bit Terminator-esque going on on the side of the face here. But this side of the face has done quite well. Oh, I think I'm in trouble with that facial expression. But that's okay. There's going to be a part two to this video where we fix it up in Mesh Mixer. We clean up the mesh because it always comes off a little bit rough from this program. Almost forgot to show you how to save. You simply come to the share button. You've got export model, pick your file format. I didn't change anything here besides my scale, which I put in millimeters. And after that, I hit export, gave it a file name, put it in the folder that I wanted and hit the save button. And after only a few short seconds, the file was made. All right, thank you to my lovely assistant, Claire, not only for this, but letting me have all of my equipment all over the house, as well as looking after the kids while I'm building drift trikes and drift motorized mobility scooters and stupid things like that. I might rescan her to get the model looking as nice as she deserves, and then check out part two coming out soon, when we put the mesh into mesh mixer, and then maybe do a 3D print. Thanks for watching, see you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.